Hi year four, um, time for the three o'clock read. I've got a book that I found in my house and it's one of my favourite stories when I was little. Um, and in contrast to the hot day, it's just set in the highlands of Scotland where the wind is a lot wilder. Uh, got the dogs helping me out. They're very hot, Jade's there, our head in the curtain. And Elsa, if you can see her, she's here, she's got a new bed. Are you all right there, Elsa? Yeah, I see. They're both pretty, Ooh, put your bed down. They're both pretty hot. Okay, so we're going to read a book called Stories to be read by Firelight, and we are going to read the story called Sea Singing, which is one of my all-time favourite stories when I was a child. Ooh, look how far so you can see. It's got some really amazing pictures in this book. Beautiful. Okay, so it's called Sea Singing. Did I tell you about the time I heard singing coming from the sea? It came very high and clear from way out beyond the rocks, under the cliff. I knew it wasn't wind or seabirds calling. It was a woman's voice. I was sure of that. You mustn't go near the edge, not ever, they warned. This isn't summer, remember? The wind can be very strong. They were right, of course. They didn't need to tell me. I'm much too frightened of the rough sea those huge waves crashing up against the cliffs and pounding and sucking over the boulders below. I went looking at other places, hoping I would hear it again, all along the beach and over the rocks at low tide. There wasn't much else to do anyway. My legs were still thin and wobbly from being ill, but I walked and walked. Sometimes I thought about my friends at home doing proper things like going to school and shopping and watching their favourite programmes on television and how silly they'd think of me, wandering about on an empty beach, listening for voices. When I told Mum's friend, Morag, about the singing, she didn't seem the least bit surprised. She'd heard it herself, she said. But that was a long time ago. I was staying with Morag, having a whole term off school, a bit like us, they said the sea air would do me good. Morag lives by the sea all year round, not just for holidays. Her house is high up on the cliff. There's a room with a big window where she does her painting. Oh, I love the colours in this painting here. Late that afternoon, Morag and I went for a walk along the cliffs. We didn't hear any singing but the wind roared and the sky looked like a shoal of fish. More like the sea, best in winter. In the summertime, she told me, she has lots of visitors. They have picnics on the beach and boating parties and swim off the rocks. More as a very strong swimmer. Summer is fun, she said. It's a wonderful thing to have friends, but I'm always quite glad when they all go home and I'm left to my painting. I guess this is more like here doing her painting. Most of Morag's paintings are of the sea. Some of them she hangs up for everyone to look at. Some she stacks face up against the wall or leaves them lying on the floor. She doesn't much like people in the room with her when she's painting. She doesn't mind me being there as long as I get on quietly with my own drawing. Morag sings a lot while she paints. She sings along with the music on her tapes. When she's finished, she washes her brushes and makes tea, and then we talk. I expect as a selkie, she said, when I told her the singing. Of course, I didn't know what a selkie was, so she told me. She can see the paintings very well. Selkies are seal people. They can cast off their skin and take human form. Once, a fisherman saw a selkie playing on the rocks with her sisters and he stole her skin. She couldn't turn back into a seal again. That night, she came crying and moaning around to his cottage, all running wet with her black hair dripping, begging him to give her back her skin. But he wouldn't, because he wanted her for his wife. So she stayed, and she was a good wife to him. She cooked and cleaned the house and in time they had children, two boys and a girl. She seemed happy enough and sang at her work. But often 
she would carry her baby with her down to the shore. She would stand there for a long time looking out to the sea. Then a big black seal would come out and swim along quite close to the tide line and the baby would laugh and hold up his little arms. The fisherman kept his wife's skin hidden away, always chained it to a different place that she couldn't find it. But sometimes he would relent, that means to give up if you relent, and let her hold it just for a little while. One day, when she held it in her hands, she tricked him into thinking that something was wrong with his sheep on the hillside. He hurried up there to see, but found nothing amiss. When he got back, his wife was gone. The little boys were safe inside the cottage. They told him their mother had taken the baby down to the sea. Panic-stricken, he ran off down to the cliff path, shouting her name in the wind. See him here, the baby on the shore. He found his baby, playing happily on the shore. His wife's clothes were lying on the rock nearby. When he asked her where her mother was, she pointed out to the sea. He picked her up and ran along the beach, calling and calling. But when darkness fell, he gave up hope and went back to the cave to care for his family. So you think she's gone back to the sea as a seal. The sulky wife never came back home to live with them again. But sometimes in the morning, he would find wet footprints in the floor around the children's beds and their pillows damp with salt water. One night he lay in the wait and the selkie appeared, crying over her children and kissing them as they slept. Then he lit a candle and told her how desperately he missed her and wanted her back. She replied sadly that she could never return. She told him that she had a seal husband of the children of the sea and that she belonged there with them. That's really the end of the story. From that time on, the fisherman had to live without his sulky wife. Perhaps he'd always known that one day she would go back to the sea. But on the children's birthdays, there was always presents, coral beads and combs and wonderful mother of pearl boxes left on the sand by the rocks on the shore. How do you know all about selkies? I asked Morag when she finished her story. She just smiled and said, my grandmother told me. Soon I was strong again and it was time for me to say goodbye to Morag. She gave me one of her pictures to take home with her. It's very beautiful, all watery and curvy. I have it on a bedroom wall. Sometimes I think it looks like waves or the shape of a seal or perhaps a woman swimming. Sometimes I look at it for a long time I think it looks like Morag herself, with her hair spreading like dark weeds on the water. Do you guys think Morag could be a selkie, maybe? Maybe she's the daughter of the selkie who went back into the sea. And that's the end of the story. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Um, maybe you can read some more from this book tomorrow. Hope you guys are well. I see the dog slept completely through that. I'm not interested at all. Hope you guys enjoyed it more than them. Um, Speak to you soon.